Menopause can bring many challenges and it can have both physical and emotional impacts, but it can also be a time of opportunity, strength and empowerment. Today I'm joined by Boopa's clinical lead for women's health, Dr Sam Wilde, who's going to share with us some ideas for self-care and lifestyle changes that women can take to really help support them through this period in their lives. So Sam, to start us off, I mean, what are the lifestyle changes that, that women can make? So there's plenty that women can make. Um, let's start with sleep. So important to have between six and eight hours of sleep at night. And even if you're not asleep, just to get that rest in bed and to keep that up at weekends as well. It's important to keep to the same bedtime and the wake up time. Um, next up, diet. So important to have a Mediterranean type diet. Um, we know that that's very healthy for our hearts and our risk of heart disease increases after the menopause. Um, and also to ensure that you're getting enough nutrients as well. So um, we can start to get thinning of the bones as we approach the perimenopause, the menopause and postmenopause. Um, so we need to get enough calcium in our diets, aiming for two to three portions of calcium rich foods a day. Um, as well as dairy products, that includes things like green leafy vegetables as well. And if you're unsure what other products contain calcium, then you can have a look online for a calcium calculator okay. and ensure that you get enough vitamin D. So take a 10 microgram um, supplement a day of vitamin D. Again, helps to keep the bones nice and strong. Is there anything that you should be reducing or not having in the diet? Not so much alcohol, that will aggravate hot flushes and night sweats and affect your sleep quality. Don't smoke. Um, and try to avoid too much caffeine if you feel that you are sensitive to that. Okay. What about exercise? What's the best type of exercise if there is one? So really important to give your heart a good workout. So some aerobic exercise and also some weight bearing exercise to help keep your bones nice and strong and some resistance exercise using weight or your own body weight which will help to keep your muscle strength too. What about mood swings and low mood anxiety? These are really common around the time of menopause. What can people do to help themselves with those symptoms? It's really important to speak to your loved ones and your friends and your colleagues about how you're feeling and, and try and get some support from them. Mm -hmm. um, again, trying to practice mindfulness can really help. Um, meditation, exercise is brilliant um, to help calm you down too. Um, cognitive behavioural therapy is a very useful type of therapy for this um, particular issue too. Um, and I always advise women that it will give you really useful tools for evermore really, um, and to help with family and friends as well. So, um, you know, definitely worth exploring that as a treatment. A lot of women sort of suffer in silence, don't they? But that irritability, you know, it's your loved ones who will feel the brunt of that. So I always think, you know, let them help you, let them in, let them know what you're experiencing, because you are really all in it together. Absolutely, yeah. What about memory and brain fog? That's a really common symptom that a lot of people struggle with. It is, and I see countless women that come into my surgery complaining and, and worrying that they're maybe starting to suffer with dementia. Um, and I, you know, I reassure them that this is normal, and, and often that on its own is enough. Mm -hmm. um, but women have often found their own ways to manage things, so list making is, is really common. Um, again, trying to speak to people around them and explain what's going on, maybe using technology as well. So there's lots of different ways that they can get around this. Um, and HRT, if they choose to take that, will help too. HRT also helps with hot flushes and night sweats, but are there things other than HRT that can also help with that? Yeah, so again, sort of having a healthy diet, avoiding those things that may aggravate it, um, exercising will help. Some people choose to try herbal remedies. Now, there's no good evidence that these work, but also there's no good evidence that they don't work either. They've just not been tested. Um, so I always advise women to speak to their GP first to make sure it's not going to interfere with any other medications that they're taking, um, but then to give it a try. Um, not to spend a fortune on it, but give it a go, and if it works, then brilliant. And there are some other prescribed medicines that can be, it's quite confusing, but sometimes antidepressants, whilst they don't necessarily help for the low mood associated with menopause, can help with the, with the night sweats and hot they flushes. Do. So um, for women that can't have HRT or, or ch who choose not to have HRT, they may be prescribed antidepressants in these circumstances. And the final thing I want to ask about is vaginal dryness, because that's a really common symptom, isn't it? 
It really is, and we'd really encourage women to come forwards because we know that about 70% are likely to be suffering with this, and yet only 7% receive treatment. Wow. So there's a few things you can do before you see your GP. Uh, you can buy vaginal moisturisers and lubricants over the counter, um, and they can be used together. So a vaginal moisturiser, you'd apply every few days, just like you moisturise your face, you apply, apply the moisturiser, and the lubricants you use when you're having sex. And there's two different types of lubricants. There's oil-based and there's water-based. Um, if you're using condoms, you must avoid the oil ones because it can damage the integrity of those. But we can find, you know, find it helps if a partner, one partner uses the oil-based one, one partner uses the water-based one, um, a term that we call slide and glide, which I absolutely <laughs> love, um, but people find that that works really well. Okay. Um, you can also get vaginal oestrogen, so you're applying the oestrogen exactly to where it's needed and that can come in different forms. And again, you can get that over the counter if you fit certain criteria or your GP can prescribe it for you. And it's different to the other forms of HRT, isn't it? Just the, the vaginal oestrogen is, is safer and some people who can't use patches or take tablets can use that, is that right? Absolutely, so um, for example, women that have breast cancer, um, they may be able to use topical oestrogen um, depending on what other treatment they're on. So something they need to discuss with their specialist, but yeah, it might be absolutely fine for them to use it. Okay, thanks Sam. We know that HRT is a really helpful treatment, but it's great to know that there are all these things that women can do, whether they're taking HRT or not. Yeah, and it's absolutely imperative that they do. You know, we always recommend that they do this, as you say, whether they're taking HRT or not.